Welcome to Trades Spoon. My name is Al Karpel. I'm CEO and founder of uh, Trade Spoon. And today we're going to have our weekly strategy roundtable where we talk about current market conditions, review recent trades, see where there are opportunities in the market. Uh, disclosures are very important to see them. Trading stock and options involve risk, not suitable for everyone. You must be aware of the risk and be willing to accept it in order to invest in current market conditions. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not registered with FINRA nor CC. I'm showing you what I do in my own account based on my own risk tolerance level for general education and information purposes only. Please consult your financial advisor prior to making any trading decisions. Also, it should not be assumed that the future trade picks will be profitable or will improve past performance. All right, let's take a look. So we did have a PCE data this morning. Market continues to trade higher. Uh, WDA is up. Uh, FedEx is up 2%. Microsoft is up. HPQ is up. Texas Instrument is up. Goldman Sachs. NVIDIA. Uh, So let's look at interest rates after the PC data. Interest rates are stable, still trading below uh, 200 day moving average, below 50 day moving average. It pulled back, right? It tried to break above 200 day moving average unsuccessfully. High yield is stable. Uh, we have rebound in value stocks uh, off a of 50 day moving average. KPQ is bouncing back. Um, at all-time highs, marginal new highs, and we have spiders already testing all-time highs at 550. Small caps continue to bounce back. And about 50 day moving average, we have regional banks uh, participating in the rally, silver. Uh, energy up, metals and miners up, copper is up, China is up. So we do have a bounce back across the board and better than expected to see data. Uh, NVIDIA is uh, consolidating, right? We had a sharp pullback and now it's kind of a trading sideways. But we talked about that uh, uh, probably the top is set for NVIDIA and some of the semiconductor names. But the value stocks in general are bouncing back from the recent pullback. Right? We have three days pullback, now bouncing back off of 50 day moving average. So a uh, dollar is uh, continue to be strong, so it's not you know, a one-way trade. Dollar is diverging from the yield, so we have a stronger dollar above the uptrend line, uh, close to year-to-date high, 106. Uh, but the yield is close, the up going the opposite way, close to uh, uh, April lows, right? Close to April lows. Any questions? All right, in terms of uh, some of the trade idea, let's look at the stock for a toolbox in terms of where is the support and resistance levels are. Support is 543, overhead resistance of 546. We're trading at, we're testing all time highs at 549. Still slightly bearish trend. We're at the end of June. Uh, and the market is overbought again at the all time high. So now let's take a look at the position. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Now that it's loaded. So again, we have support at 540, right? The spikes, this is expiration this week. Uh, let's zoom out into the monthly expiration. The main support right now is 530. So we really don't have any support between uh, 550 and 530. In terms of overhead resistance, there's 
smaller demand for calls, right? These are out of the money puts. This is out of the money calls or aggregate of calls and puts, but high open interest is 560. So that would be the levels I would watch, right? There are two scenarios. One is we retest in 540, right? In terms of support. And one is overhead resistance. That's kind of where we've been trading for the past two weeks. So there is a, the next level of overhead resistance is 516. And on the next level of support is 530. This is where you do have position in terms of dealer position and then a high open interest, which usually serves as a support, main support and resistance level. So going into the, we're approaching earnings season. So let's think about now end of July, end of August. Scenario number one, we break about 560, right? And the bull market continues as we have positive earnings momentum, right? Stocks like HPQ, um, Oracle, Microsoft breaking out, Google breaking out. So we still have a pretty uh, strong momentum names that are leading the market to the upside. And uh, you see the inflation data is subsiding and uh, um, you know, the uh, labor market is still very strong. Scenario number two, we're trading in the range between 560 and 530. Going into the end of summer, uh, July, August. And scenario number three, we break below 530. You know, uh, maybe unemployment, if unemployment picks up significantly, right, and, and the economic data continues to deteriorate, then potentially we can reach uh, drop below 530. All right, so how many of you say scenario number one, we are gonna make new all-time highs and continue to break out uh, above 560? Uh, how many of you say two, we're trading in the range? And how many of you say three, we're gonna uh, break uh, below 50-day moving average? Abbas, Andre, Don, Ernest, Joseph, Louise, Martin, Nick, Peter, T. All right, we have two, two. All right, everybody said two. Okay, I agree. That's, I also think uh, you know, the fourth scenario is the, uh, we're trading uh, a range bound, you know, maybe another 2% to the upside, but uh, going into elections, we're trading, we're trading in this range. There are geopolitical risks, right? The elections in Europe, dollar is strong. Uh, potentially, we could have a tick up in unemployment. We'll see that next Friday. Or potentially, there is still risk of uh, you know, uh, corporate debt, uh, residential corporate debt coming due, and potentially can cause regional banks uh, to pull back. But as of right now, regional banks are actually bouncing back. Right? You can see strong rebound in regional banks decent rebound in small caps. So the uh, in terms of the broadening of the participation case today, we do have a move to the upside, right, from the oversold levels. Um, any questions? All right, in terms of trades, so let's review the trade. So we have different services. If you're looking for ideas, then I would look at the big section in Active Trader. Um, Autodesk, Rockwell, UHS, those are the short term signal where we give you suggested entry price, right? Based on our neural network models, right? So you can either rely on stock or test toolbox for the entry price, predicted low, or you look at the pre market if the futures are up, maybe yesterday's close, right? Yesterday's close. In this, in this example, they're pretty close. And here we're looking for 1% gain or 1% stop loss, right, for short-term signal. Uh, today, actually, I trade, uh, there are a few trades that got closed today.
Any questions? So, trying to close uh, the uh, Texas Instruments, right? So, first, the Royal Caribbean, right? So, this was an example of uh, active trader, right? So, you can see uh, active trader appeared actually twice this week, um, RCL. Uh, so, I bought it at 159.35, closed half of the position at 161.05, looking for 1% gain, and then looking for 2% gain. Uh, so this would be an example of how you would trade active trader. We do have live trading room. I would encourage you to watch the recordings so you can understand uh, how uh, I trade. But basically, I usually wait three five-minute candlesticks. So I wait the first 15 minutes when the market opens. Look at the support and then make a decision to enter at uh, either the predicted low or at the open price. Uh, if you're planning to hold position longer, maybe it makes sense, even if the stock gets up, maybe it makes sense to enter the trade. So uh, there's no universal rule. Like, right? Some people ask me, what are you doing this case scenario? What are you doing that case scenario? Uh, my answer is, you know, please watch the live trading room or we'll try to participate in live trading room. Um, and um, if, uh, the idea between, behind Active Trader, Weekly Trader, and Monthly Trader is that we are providing you with trade signals, right? Active Trader, we're looking for 1% gain. Weekly Trader, we're looking for 2.5% gain because the positions usually hold longer, right? So this was Citigroup this week. Uh, so you would have to wait uh, longer for some of these signals. But the idea is that we provide you signals based on different models, different time intervals. Uh, and you will have to manage those trades. Um, and there are, I do use these signals to do trading in live trading room, and you can see them in the lead circle. So this is an example of RCL from today from uh, from Active Trader. Uh, in terms of Texas Instrument, you know, so it's not only up stocks. Sometimes I trade options. I'm trying to close Texas Instruments. It also kept up today. Um, so uh, it's a July position, not a lot of time. So and market is overbought. So maybe today I tried to close the trade. Um, any questions on the lead circle? Uh, Nike. This is an example of looking for asymmetrical returns, right? So we talked about probability of success versus return on capital quite often. Right? So in live trading room, I talked about trading plan. Uh, keeping a journal, documenting all your trades. So you can structure your trade where you have high probability of success and smaller return on capital, right? They're moving in a different direction. Probability of success going higher, right? Return on capital going lower. Uh, but you cannot have high probability of success, high return on capital, right? So in case of Nike, this is where I'm looking high return on capital, right? but the probability of success is small. Uh, and I'm looking for different signatures, different patterns, different events like earnings, where if you look at the position, right, looking back into the position, you can see high open interest, right? And uh, we saw that in the trade here, right? Nike had very high open interest, high demand for calls, very little demand for puts, right? And that was kind of an invitation for a uh, sharp move to the uh, upside or downside. Since, you know, they're struggling with their sales in China, you can see I put on a trade for 60 cents and basically closed it for $1.80. So 200% return. So this is an example where you're getting close to 200% return. Uh, and uh, you have a well-defined risk, right? I can't lose more than 60 cents, right? So $60 on one contract, 60 
three dollars, but my maximum gain could be you know, four dollars and fifty cents. Four dollars and fifty cents. So this is an example of where you're looking for asymmetrical returns and structure your trades with high probability of success and low return on capital or high return on capital, low probability of success. Right? And that determines if you want to be short or long in volatility. And I covered that during live trading room. You know, sometimes it makes sense to be short relative, sometimes to be long. And you can see market is extremely volatile, right? Nike usually does not move 20%. This is three to four standard deviation moves. Walgreens World Alliance, I think, was the worst sell-off in the history of Walgreens, right? I think over 20% return. So you still have this large move to the upside or to the downside, as we've seen HPQ. And you know, for every HPQ rally, we have CRM, right? Where you have a sharp sell off. Uh, so that's been the uh, the pattern for the earnings, the trades, right? Kind of this people are have a lot of expectations, high expectations, whether it's AI stock or not, and you have these uh, sharp moves to the upside or to the downside. So this is an example where high probability, low probability, lower probability success by high return on capital. And if you structure your trade correctly, this is an example of the butterfly, where by butterfly, 175 foot, 280 foot, and 180 foot, and I was able to close it for $1.80. So, and I am out of Microsoft trade. So this is an example of both stock and option trades, earnings, directional momentum trades that are based on our neural networks, the models. We provide you these signals, and it's up to you to decide which signal do you want to trade. If you want to know what I trade, then you know we do have a big circle. If you want stock only trades, it's a robo investor. If you want just spreads, it's premium spread trader. But if you want to see all my trades, it would be a lead circle or a shadow trader. I cover stock for your school box, right? Going back to probabilities, uh, we do have um, a seasonal chart. You can look at seasonality, right? Usually, a market sell and main go away during election. Actually, June, July are strong months. And then again, August, September, pull back. So July could be strong. Usually during election year, it could be strong. Uh, but then we do usually have a pullback August, September. So maybe a repetition of last year. Last year, June, July was very strong. And then we had a 10% pullback August, September, October. Uh, so that's the, some of the tools. Also probability calculator, kind of just summarize you know, how to look at the probability, you know, if there are no events, right, if you don't have a black swan event, so that based on volatility, low volatility, this is a 12, 13 level, one standard deviation move is 533, well positioned, people are, that happened to be 50 day movement, so people are pretty well positioned buying 534 puts. On the upside, probably small chance, right, 12% chance that in 50 days, we will be trading about five to six. So this gives you guidelines for you know stocks you research and to determine you know where the support and resistance levels. That's the research tools, stock for cash toolbox and live trading. Education is free, I believe education should be free. So you can participate, you can watch, download my trading plan, trading guides. We have recordings, right? I encourage you to, you know, if you're not sure what a butterfly is, you can search. You know, butterfly, and you should be able to find, uh, you know, how to structure butterflies. And it's a one hour video that should help you. Um, this is a, you know, if you're looking for additional information. All right, Abbas, Andrew, BJ, Don, Ernest, Joseph, Louis, Martin, Nick, Peter, T. Any questions on recent trades, on the services we provided uh, at TradeSpoon? And any other questions? All right, so then let's just sum it up. So let's look at the weekly weekly momentum and just see where, what the market looks like. So regional banks looks like they found support around year-to-date low and bouncing back. That's very positive for the market. We have broadening of the participation, same price action, small caps this week. Spiders is facing all-time highs, 
and overhead resistance is at 515. Not a lot of overhead resistance, which, you know, any positive news and it could break about that level. Semiconductors are green candlestick stabilization, but we do have a reversal and similar price action PPQ at uh, all time highs. Stocks like Apple continue to lead the market, right? Or Apple rebounded close to 52 week high, uh, or all time high. Uh, Microsoft continues to break out. So, and you have uh, Google continue to break out. So mega cap technology, they're still leading the market. A momentum means um, LLY, LLY really continues to rally higher. Move, move. So it's not just technology, but momentum in general. Uh, you know, we talked about Goldman Sachs uh, bouncing, a uh, strong rebound in Goldman Sachs this week. Uh, General Electric, uh, some of the uh, industrials. You know, basically neutral consolidating. Uh, dollar is uh, not making new highs, so that's positive. It's facing strong overhead resistance. It stems all the way to 22. So that's positive for the market. If it breaks above this level, that would be negative. Uh, again, weak uh, Japan, Japanese yen, that's a macroeconomic headwind with risk to the market. You know, VIX is almost at 11 candle, got 11 candle. So VIX is multi-year low, very complacent market, uh, strong uh, value actually neutral, right? Value didn't go anywhere this week. It, it tested all-time high and pulling back. Uh, QPQ is at all-time high. We talked about semiconductors, small caps, regional banks. Uh, so how did silver end up doing? Silver also consolidating trading sideways. Uh, Germany, so it looks like Germany is another uh, rebound this week. Metals and miners are bouncing. Uh, copper trading sideways. China, marginal new lows. So China sitting the key support level. Bitcoin, right? Very strong pullback in Bitcoin. Already test in April, uh, you know, April lows, you know, March lows. So Bitcoin hasn't really gone anywhere since the beginning of March. Uh, double top, right? Neckline. This is a good proxy for risk taking. I think if you do have another sharp sell off next couple of weeks in Bitcoin, that probably will put a cap to the market, current market rally. So I am watching Bitcoin and you know, highly correlated to NVIDIA, right? And, uh, and some of the reversals. Any other questions? Look at Nike. Nike is with a sharp sell off, 20% down. We talked about Logan's Alliance, Micron, FedEx. So HPQ is bouncing back. Texas instrument is bouncing back. Sharp reverse and Goldman Sachs. We do have uh, Russell rebalancing. So today, you know, we will have these switch shows because it's end of the quarter, end of the first half. Russell rebalancing. Large institutions are repositioning themselves for the second half of the year. So you have these sharp moves. You know, like Goldman Sachs was at 460 and 440. Pretty wide range for one week. Uh, Amazon looks like people are taking some profit, Google taking some profit, so it's still rebalancing, right? You can see kind of this chart moves up or down on a daily basis. All right, any other question? Thoughts on gold? I'm bullish, right? I have silver, gold and silver are highly correlated. I know some people you know, silver is industrial metal, so it's also related to the economy. Gold could be inflationary, case, but so far it's consolidating. Strong momentum, but we had a strong year. Gold rallies consolidating, it makes sense. I think the next step is after the consolidation, move higher. And that goes for gold and silver. Then you will go down from here. Uh, 
I yes, I think ten year yield is a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. I mean, it is oversold. Ten year yield is oversold, um, but it's also below this four thirty five level, which spans all the way to twenty twenty two, right? The highs. So it's been a pattern of higher lower highs and lower lows. Sorry, but, so ten year yield lower lows and lower highs, and I think that continues because inflation is trending lower. I mean, we have a few months where it's up, but you know, quarter over quarter it, it is trending down. And and the other thing to watch is next week uh, unemployment data. Right, it did tick up last time, right, to four uh, percent. If unemployment ticks up again. If unemployment ticks up again, uh, then you know uh, interest rate could sharply drop, right? So four percent, you know, if it jumps to four point three, four point two, uh, next Friday, you know, you could have a sharper pullback. Any questions? All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. You were awesome. Thank you for participating. I will see you, some of you at the closing bell, some of you on uh, Monday, uh, Monday morning. Uh, so please consider signing up for Lead Circle. We do give 30 day money back guarantee. Most of you are already subscribers, but we do have some new names. Nick, not sure uh, if you're new or not but i do see a lot of familiar names uh, bj thank you joseph thank you ernest thank you very much guys you're awesome thank you for participating take care